fight. <laughs> I already hear it now. This is your crank bolt. You want to stick this back in after you have pulled it off and gotten your pulley off. Step two, put your tool on. You cannot do this without this tool. The rest of it you can be ghetto for, but you cannot be ghetto for this part. You must do the other part the right way. You must have three bolts of equal size to do this next part so you can have this done in less than five minutes. After you have inserted your third bolt, tighten your tool up. Now these are regular hardware store bolts. They are a fine thread. They are a 916 shoulder head bolt. You'll need three of these. That will cost you less than two dollars, maybe three. Inflation has gone up a bit. As long as you have the harmonic balancer tool. <laughs> Gotta have the tool. Step three, get a three quarters inch ratchet and socket. Tighten your tool up. Put some torque on it. If everything is going right, you will have this off in less than five minutes. If it's not coming off this easy for you, you need to find out why. Because as easy as this pulling, there's no editing. This is a straight run video. Okay, less than five minutes off. And there you go. Works every time. Do it that way. You won't strip a thread. And you can put your balancer back on without any damage. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and do the timing chain service. At this point, after you've removed your balancer, go ahead and take your bolt out. We got a new one here from O'Reilly's. The other one was galled out and was going to strip the thread, but we decided not to. We spent the $10 for the bolt. Sometimes it's the way it goes. Okay, at this point, it's going to go ahead and remove all eight fasteners to get the cover off. You may have to remove or at least loosen a couple of the oil pan bolts. If you have a factory gasket on, this will probably destroy it. We have a, a reusable Felpro in there, so we shouldn't have that problem. Okay, now we're going to smack this timing cover off. Wait, is there bolts on the bottom holding this? Mm -mm. It's the pressure of the oil uh, seal, your oil pan seal. You have to kind of push out and pull out. You gotta wiggle it, dude. It's gonna take some, a little bit of fight. <laughs> I already hear it now. Ugh. Single roller, it's a Chloe's, but a single roller dead chain. Mm -hmm. Why build a beautiful motor and put a single roller? Okay, we'll get the cover out of the way, man. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, now you can play with the chain. <laughs> oh. Well, there's our four degrees. This thing was still beating Subarus. Do you want me to put the balancer on and rotate it and see if... Uh, oh, yeah. We can time it. Just so you can be time. we got to time it before we tear it apart, that's for sure. Well, it's a Chloe's, so that'll make it easy. That's cool. Well, so 30,000 miles I think this chain's had on it. High compression motor and... Spring valves. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to rotate it. Spark plugs are in. Oh, uh, you will be able to. Oh, you're just gonna put some bolts in and turn it with a pry bar. Okay, before we take the timing chain off, I want to show you guys um, what timing chain slop does to an engine. Now this is a performance engine and it seems like every time we tear one of these performance 350s apart we find that the cam is dotted up at 12 o'clock as opposed to 6 on top and 12 on the bottom. It's 12 and 12 on these performance motors. Which um, in the theology of a 350 you can do it any way you want. You can go down or up. It really doesn't matter. 
the purpose of this video and at least this section in the timing chain guide for the 350 is I want to show you that if you say one day set your distributor to 8 degrees and then you check it again later on and it's at 4 or like in this case it started up at 8 and dropped to 4 um, you got some chain stretch problems and once we got this one apart we realized this chain was actually 4 to 6 degrees but there's a noise that happens and I'm going to show you what to look for so you can test to see if you have timing chain slop in your 350. Okay so I've got this set up with two different cameras um, I have no way to do it in one I just don't have that kind of equipment for this but either way it'll illustrate the point you're going to see the bottom crank move but you're not going to see the distributor move and then you're going to see it catch and that's what was happening we'd have this thing start great cold but as soon as that chain stretch happened then this thing would run like crap until it got warmed up so listen very carefully I have the wood stove going in the background it is cold where I'm at unfortunately so you're going to have to listen real careful but I will turn up the timing chain noise Okay, right there, it did not move, and you actually heard the thunk. We'll do it a couple times. Oh, too much. Right there. That's a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot, but I'll tell you what, a little is a lot, and a lot's too much. Okay, what I want you to look for is right here for it to actually tighten, and then this catches, and once this catches, then your distributor catches. Well, that also means your cam is, is also out of time. Right there. You have that noise in your gear set, and your timing noise, you, you got a chain problem, which means you just need to do a chain like we're doing today. I'm going to put an arrow up now, and this is where I want you to watch for the chain to slap. Nope, just out there. Right there. In fact, you heard it that time. Right there. Heard it again. Right there. The whole time, the distributor has not moved. So, now we're ready to continue on. You want to get your motor timed up as close as you can because it is going to be off. Once you get your chain back on, whichever way it's off, you just simply come in here and just give it a light turn. But we'll get to that when we're putting this on. Right now, we're ready to disassemble. Okay, at this point, take your dampener off. We just put this back on to show you for the testing procedures. See how it's tight here? See that? That's chain slap. See that? Sloppy chain. See that? Sloppy chain. Now let's see if we can't get this turned in a way where it's sloppy on both sides. Might not have enough torque there to do that. Well, that's okay. Right here. Way too much slop. There we go. That's some pretty good slop. I think that's not the worst I've seen, but it's the worst I've seen in the 350 in quite some time. That's the kind of noises you'll hear too. Most of the time with a timing chain, you just won't know that it's gone until you start having some drivability issues that you can't figure out. Even with a new distributor, 
even with the new carburetor. You'll never get it timed or tuned right until this doesn't move around on you. Tell you what, if this motor spits another chain in 30,000 miles, it's getting gear drive. That's all there is to it. All right, let's get let's get the stuff apart. Okay, at this point, remove your half inch bolts. Keep your bolts separated. There's oil on those bolts too. Those should be dry as well. Don't know, man. Oh, whoa. Oh. I'm gonna take it off my hand. It won't come off my hand. It will. Never mind. No, it's just oil that's gotten behind the. It wasn't sealed right, or they didn't use any. Um, what do they do, the oil things? Why is this all gooped? Those seal plugs, check and see if those are plugs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stretches chain. There should be a little hole in one of those for feedback oil. No, no holes. I'm telling you, man, we need your little camera. Alright, at this point, you need to install gear puller. We got this one from Harbor Freight. We do have one trick we have to do with it. You have to use a C-clamp or a uh, monkey wrench, plumber's tool. This is the quick and dirty way to use the Harbor Freight tool. There are better tools out there, but this works. Quick and dirty way, done in less than five minutes. No heat needed.